Hello, I'm Pastor Brian. And uh, as I've been doing these uh, podcasts on occasion, I've talked a lot about the rapture and what's going on in the world today that is pointing to the imminency of the rapture like never before in world history. Well, I recently received a question uh, from a lady named Peggy. And uh, her question was this, what about the revival for a billion souls that D.L. Moody talked about before the rapture? Well, I was not particularly aware of that, but apparently Dwight L. Moody, a great evangelist of the faith in the latter 1800s, 19th century, had, uh, had predicted uh, a great revival and salvation of a billion souls uh, before the rapture would occur. Well, does that mean that what I've been saying about how soon the rapture could be, uh, uh, does that go in conflict with what I've been sharing? You know, uh, if Dwight L. Moody's prediction is correct, does that mean the rapture is as imminent as I've been sharing that it very well could be? As I answer that, I want to make three points, three simple points. Number one is this, we pastors can often feel very strongly about an opinion we have, and it may be something that we feel very convinced about in our own heart, but that is not scripture. Um, it is, uh, it, 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 it's interesting as it might be, uh, you can't bank on our our feelings and what we think may happen. We can only bank on what Scripture says. So uh, I, I have nothing but respect for D.L. Moody uh, and his statement about that billion souls. Once again, that's something that was in his heart that he shared way back then with, uh, with his people. Uh, but that's not Scripture. That's not God's Word. That's uh, That's his sense. Here's my second point. When you look at scripture and it look at the last days around the time of the rapture, he talks about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 about a great apostasy taking place, a, a falling away. That's like uh, in the church in general, the Christian church, a falling away from the the, uh, the basics of biblical teaching and the biblical gospel and, 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 and standing on, on the Word of God and growing in the Word of God and, uh, and, and just sort of a falling away from that uh, to more feel-good sermons, you know? And I'm afraid that uh, that's exactly what's going on in our, in our society today. I, I think much of Christian preaching today is feeding cotton candy. To, uh, to the body of Christ rather than solid food on God's Word. Uh, and I, I see a, a great apostasy taking place all around us. And then here's my third point. Dwight L. Moody ministered in the latter part of the 1800s, 19th century. And in that 150-ish years that have gone by since then, you know, uh, I think it's possible that Truly a billion souls have come to faith in Jesus Christ in these last days. So, so there you go. I like what Peggy said at the end of her little uh, email. She said, but I'm ready. <laughs> and that's the most important thing, being ready. I like what Jesus talked about, his second coming and our preparedness for that. He said in Matthew 24, verse 42, uh, he said, therefore be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. Be on the alert. And then in verse 44 of that chapter, he said, for this reason you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. You know, whenever he comes, and I've uh, been uh, sharing out that, oh, we seem to be on the cusp of it. Um, when it actually happens, 
it'll be a surprise. It will be a surprise. I mean, I sit here and telling you, oh, it's getting near, it's getting near. Uh, really, deep down in my heart, I don't think it's today, you know. But I think we're going to be feeling that way. And then, there it is. So it'll be a surprise. So Jesus said there two things. He said, be on the alert, Christian. And secondly, be ready, Christian, because you don't know when that day is coming. You know, when he says, be on the alert, be aware of what's going on around you, what's going on in this world. The, the indications, the Lord in his word has given us many indicators, signs that the end is getting very near. And uh, being on the alert is being aware of that. Not putting your head in the sand and just saying, oh, I, I, don't, I don't look at stuff like that. Uh, a revelation is, uh, a, that, that, that book, I, I, I don't get it, I just avoid it. The one book in the Bible that promises a blessing to those who will read it and listen to it. They go, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. That's putting your head in the sand. That's not being on the alert. And Jesus said, be on the alert because you don't know when he's coming. And then this is what it means to be ready. Um, three, three things, very simply. Number one is be absolutely sure of your own salvation. Sure of it. You see, our salvation is not a hope so. It's an absolute no so. It's not the case, are you really saved? Are you going to heaven? When the rapture comes, will you go to be with the Lord? How many of you would say, well, I sure hope so. No, 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 no. It is not a hope so. It's an absolute no-so in God's word. Be sure of your salvation. You know, in, in uh, John chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, it talks about the coming of Jesus the first time, and it says, he was, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own, the Jewish people, did not receive him. But then he adds this, but as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the children of God. That is those who believe in his name, children of God. I love what Paul says in Romans 10, verse, chap, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved, period. He goes on in verse 10 and says, For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. That's not your righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to you. And then he adds to that. And with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Settled deal. John put it this way in 1 John 5, verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. No, not hope that you will have, but know that you have eternal life. You're living right now in that state of eternal life simply as a believer in Jesus Christ. So, brethren, it's be sure of your own salvation. Make sure that is settled. Secondly, have your, your trust and your hope in Jesus Christ alone. Not in the circumstances of this life, you know. Not, not in the issues of this life, you know. Hoping this and, and believing that. Not, not, in, not, not in earthly treasures can come and go. Not in uh, your personal hopes for this life. But 100%, 100% in Him in Jesus alone for your trust and your hope. Only in Jesus, period. Whatever comes, it's in Jesus. And here's the third point. See yourself as his servant. And whatever 
station in life you find yourself, wherever the Lord has planted you at this point, realize you're really there to, with your life and, and, and with, with your faith and, and as much as in your words, you're pointing to Him, pointing to Him as Lord, and you're there to glorify Him. Lord, let me be an instrument that glorifies you today, however you might want to use me. So with that, being sure of your own salvation, having your trust and your hope 100% in Jesus alone, and realizing you're just here as his servant, whenever he comes, you're ready. You are ready. And I like what he said there in Matthew 24, 44. For this reason, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. <laughs> so, you have a wonderful hope. Not only for this life, with his guidance and help and support and love with you, no matter what happens, but a wonderful hope of instantly being in his presence. So have, have a great day in the Lord, and I'll talk to you later. My Savior, my Jesus.